Hey guys, Mr. Wiz here. So we got a new lesson today. Today we're going to be creating something along the lines of a cutscene in a video game. To do that, we're going to use dialogue blocks, we're going to use pause blocks, and we're also going to add some special effects along the way. So stick around and we learn all that. I'm going to go ahead and shrink my picture here. So to get started, as always, make sure you're signed in in the top right corner. If you don't see your initials or your picture, you're not signed in, so make sure you do that. Okay. So, we're going to create a new project today. So, I'm going to go down here to the new project box, and I'm just going to call my project uh, Cutscene. You can call yours something else if you want to. Always make sure you're naming them, though, so that you can quickly find them when you need them. All right. So, essentially, what we're going to be doing here is creating something like you might encounter at the beginning of the game, or maybe before a big boss fight or something like that. You can create whatever kind of cutscene you want to. But I'm going to go ahead and get mine started by creating two sprites that are going to be talking to each other. That's going to be the nature of my cutscene is a conversation. So I'm going to grab my two sprites here using the red set my sprite block. Now notice automatically Make Code Arcade did name them differently. So it has one called my sprite and one's called my sprite too. I could leave it that way or I could rename them. What I want to do with these characters is I want them to be looking at each other. So I could have them on the left side and the right side looking at each other this way, or I could have it forward and back looking at each other this way. This is the way I'm going to do it for today, but it's really up to you how you decide to do yours. But we do want to make sure our sprites are facing each other. Um, so I'm going to create it as though it is a character talking to maybe a boss. Ooh, this guy has a wizard hat. We'll make him the character that I'm talking to. And then the player will just be this dude in red here, but I want one where he's facing away from me. So I'll use this version right there. So these will be my two characters that are going to be interacting. Now notice when I've created them, they both appear in the center of the screen. I am going to have to use my set position blocks to move them. We used set position blocks once before, but just a reminder of where they are. They're in the sprite section where it says set my sprites position. Now, keep in mind, we have two different sprites here with two different names. I'm going to duplicate this block to create two of them and make sure that they are named after the two sprites. So one sprite is called my sprite, the other one's called my sprite too. And here is where I will set their positions. We talked about positions once before, but just as a reminder, the way that positions work is X moves things to the right and Y moves things down. So right now you can see my character is moved from the center of the screen. He's in the top left corner of the screen right now because that is the position zero, zero. He's zero pixels to the right and zero pixels down. So he is in the center of the top left corner. So if I'm going to move him, so this is the first one, the one that's going to play the guy I'm talking to, I want him to be near the top of the screen. So I want him to be somewhere around here. And then for my character, I want him to be farther down the screen, somewhere around there. Let's see what that looks like. Not bad. They're not centered very well though, so I may just want to change that. A lot of times what I do is I use this to kind of help me get started, but then I change the numbers myself. So what if I wanted to be in the absolute center? Instead of just guessing, what is the center of the screen? Well, do you remember what the width of the screen was? I told you guys this is a number you're going to want to remember. Do you remember what the width of the screen was? It was 160. So what is half of 160? 160 divided by 2. That would give us 80. 160 divided by 2 is 80. So I'm going to go with 80 for my X on both of my characters. And now I have to figure out if the Y position. So now they're both in the center. They're looking at each other. That's great. Um, we can leave it there for now. I might move them more later once I start giving them text to see what looks good. So I am going to give it a background though. Having the black background makes it a little bit hard to see the characters since they have a black outline. So I'm going to go to the scene block and I'm going to set a background color. And I'm just going to make the background color green so it looks like they're standing on grass. So now I've got my two characters standing on grass and they are ready to start talking to each other. So to create the dialogue, we're going to go to Sprites, and we're going to scroll down a little ways until we get to this block that says My Sprite Say. The My Sprite Say block will create a bubble, a text bubble above their head. 
So what should I have my sprites say? Oh, look, it gives a little smiley face because that was what was there at the beginning. Okay, so I'm just going to create a conversation. I haven't really planned this out, so I apologize if it's not award worthy. So the character says, who are you? And then I want my character to say something. I'm going to duplicate this block to my sprite too. And I'm going to say, I am the adventurer. So now I've got my conversation happening here. Who are you? I'm the adventurer. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a conversation happening here, but as you can tell, it doesn't run naturally. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that when the program first starts, when I refresh the program, boom, they already have the text above their head. You can't really tell who's talking first, who's talking second. There's, it's a little difficult to read that way, right? Because if I read, I'm the adventurer, and then who are you, that doesn't make sense. I really need to make sure that these are coming up in the right order. So here's what we're going to do next. We're going to create the pauses. So if you go to the section that says loops, this is where you would go if you wanted to create loops in your code. The forever loop is great for something that repeats over and over and over again, like music or something like that. Um, and then if you want something to repeat a certain number of times, you can use that block. What we're going to use right now is just the pause block. The pause block is in milliseconds. I think we talked about milliseconds before, but just a quick reminder, milliseconds are basically one one thousandth of a second. So it takes a thousand milliseconds to make one second. So the first character says, who are you? How long of a pause do I want there to be before the next character talks? Let's do one full second and see what that looks like. So who are you? I am the adventurer. All right, not bad. It's looking a little bit better now. There was a pause at least, so we could tell who was talking first. But to make the conversation more natural, it would make sense for the text bubble not to stay above their head forever. So you may have noticed these little plus signs behind the dialogue blocks. I'm going to click on that plus sign, and from here I can set a time for how long it should stay on the screen. Here's what I like to do. I like to set the time for the same amount of time that I set the pause for. That way it seems kind of natural that it switches from one dialogue to the next. And we'll do one second for both of these, or so 1,000 milliseconds. All right, let's just see what that looks like. Who are you? I am the adventurer. And then the text has appeared. All right, that's not bad. So from here, I can keep going and I can do more conversation. Um, let's put another pause here. Have my first character say something again. Uh, uh, what do you want? So I'm just making up something here. I want you to leave the villagers alone. Okay, apparently I spelled villagers wrong. There we go. I want you to leave the villagers alone. So maybe in my story, the wizard is a bad guy, right? Okay, so let's see what this looks like. Who are you? I am the adventurer. What? Oh, okay. So you see how I couldn't read his text up there? This is why I mentioned I might need to move them later. So obviously my wizard needs to be farther down the screen. So I'm going to change his Y position from 20 to a larger number. So he's closer to the other character. Let's make it, uh, let's make it around 50. Let's see what that looks like. Who are you? I am the adventurer. What do you want? I want you to, ooh, do you see how hard it was to read that last bubble? When you're creating conversations like this, cutscenes like this, I always recommend that as you test them, you actually read the dialogue out loud, right? Because different people read at different speeds. People have different reading speeds. So to make sure that you're giving them enough time, I like to read the dialogue out loud when I'm testing because your out loud reading speed is usually slower than the reading speed you have in your head, right? So let's make it longer than that one second for this one. Let's see if two seconds is enough. Who are you? I am the adventurer. What do you want? I want you to leave the villagers alone. Yeah, that was decent. I could actually go a little bit longer on all those if I wanted to. 
it's better to give more time than not enough. So instead of one second, let's do one and a half seconds. So I'm typing in 1500 on these. I'm just adding a little extra half second so I don't feel rushed. And for this one, we'll do two and a half seconds. See how that feels. All right, so who are you? I am the adventurer. What do you want? I want you to leave the villagers alone. Okay, so you notice how there was some overlap there. Did you guys see that? Let's look at it again. Who are you? I am the adventurer. What do you want? I want you to leave the villagers alone. The overlap is because I changed the time of the text, but I didn't change the time of the pause, right? I always recommend the pause is at least as long as the text, maybe even a little bit longer. You can go longer if you want there to be a little pause between what they're saying. So let's just go with two seconds on these. Since they're going to talk for one and a half seconds, this makes the pause a little bit longer than the text. I am the adventurer. What do you want? I want you to leave the villagers alone. Yeah, that's not bad. I like that. All right. So you may be wondering, as you noticed, there's this with animation that I haven't talked about. Right now it says with animation false. I could change that to true. So what animation are they talking about? So rather than having all the text appear at once, you have the option to have the text come up a little bit at a time. So this is what the animation looks like. Who are you? I am the adventurer. What do you want? I want you to leave the villagers alone. So it's a little bit more natural because you're reading kind of one word at a time rather than the whole sentence at a time. Um, but it's really up to you whether or not you want to use that in your own dialogue. All right. So now let's talk about special effects. So we have a little bit of a conversation here. I could make it obviously much longer if I wanted to. Um, I can really go as long as I want to, but let's talk about special effects because that's a fun way to add things to make a game more exciting. So we have this block right here. This is in the sprite section, but it says start effect. And this one affects a particular sprite. There's also in the scene section, effects that affect the entire scene. So right here where it says effects, you have start screen effect or end screen effect. So what kind of effects do you have? There's a lot of them here. There's confetti, there's hearts, there's smiles, there's blizzards, starfield, clouds, and also none. And if you click the plus sign, you can decide how long you want to last for. So let's put an effect at the beginning of the game to kind of set the mood and we'll make it a blizzard. So there's a blizzard effect that's going on as they're talking. There we go. Kind of creates a neat little scene there. You got some particles floating in the air. Looks like the wind's blowing them. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So I'm going to add some more dialogue here. I'll make this one three seconds since his last one took two and a half seconds to say. And then I'm going to have him say... You'll have to catch me first. And then when he says that, I'm going to have him have a special effect. But instead of using the special effect block, I'm actually going to use the destroy block. And here, let me show you why. The destroy block also has special effects on it. They can have occur, if you hit the plus sign, you can have occur when the, him, he gets destroyed. So I'm going to have him basically fade out. So he's going to disappear with a special effect. What effect should I pick? Um, what does Halo look like? Let's, let's take a look at it. All right, let's watch my whole thing here. See what it looks like. Who are you? I am the adventurer. What do you want? I want you to leave the villagers alone. You'll have to catch me first. And then he disappeared. Okay, so the halo effect was okay, but it didn't look as cool as I thought it was going to. Let's go with dissolve or disintegrate. There we go. It will look like he teleported away if I do disintegrate, I think. You'll have to catch me first. And he disappeared. All right, not bad. Not bad. Now I could also make the special effects stop. So maybe when he leaves the uh, 
blizzard stops. That's a cool idea. All right. So I could do all that. I could also, the disintegrate wasn't as impressive as I thought it was going to be. So maybe instead of doing that, I could actually do the regular disintegrate effect. I'm going to get rid of the destroy block. I just want to see what this looks like. A lot of the fun bits of coding is kind of testing and, and as you go, just to kind of see what something does, see if you like it or not, right? All right, here we go. You'll have to catch me first. He disintegrated a little bit, but that not as much as I wanted him to. Okay, so I have an idea. Let's put it, that in a loop that repeats several times. So it'll disintegrate more than once. And then I'll put a pause in here. And then I will have him disappear. And by disappearing, I mean destroying the sprite so it's no longer on the screen. So how many times should I have this repeat? So let's do 10 times. And each time it'll be for a half a second. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, that was cool. Did you guys see that? That was awesome. He disappeared. The effect stopped. That was so cool. Okay. So just to finish my game, I'm going to make my character say one more thing. He's going to go, where'd he go? And then maybe that's going to be the start of my game. So he doesn't need to say that for two and a half seconds. He could say that for one second. Okay. So now my cutscene is over. And the game can start. So after that, I can give my character the ability to walk around the screen. I could add an intro to the game. Maybe I decide to use... Um, my brain just went blank. Oh, it's not scene. It's game. That's what I was looking for. I was looking for the splash block in the game section. So the character can now move. I can... Give instructions to the player, find the wizard. And then my game would begin, right? So this is a great intro to the game. Um, of course, I could always put stuff before this, right? I could have something before this that tells the name of the game, um, introduces the basic idea. There we go. All right, guys, so I think I'm going to stop the video here. We got to see what we were looking for today. We got to use the dialogue blocks. We got to use the pause blocks. We got to use some special effects, some things that were new to us and some things we've seen before. We got our first peek at looping, although we didn't do very much of that today. I'm sure we'll do a lot more down the road. So I'll go ahead and stop the video now. So what I want you guys to do is to create your cutscene now. What is the conversation that you're going to have between the two characters? How is it going to play out? Make something fun. I would love to see it. Once you have something you're ready to share, just click on that share button up here. Go ahead and name your cutscene, and then hit share project and copy the link, which you can put down in the comments of this video. Can't wait to see what you guys make. As always, thanks for watching. If you learned something new today, please click that like button. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. And don't forget to tell your friends about us so they can check it out and they can build games too. All right. Talk to you guys later. And thanks for joining.